It was one of the most decisive moments of the Second World War. 150,000 Allied troops storming the beaches of Normandy, but D-Day, of course, came at a terrible cost. 9,000 fell in the initial fighting, and this weekend they were remembered on one of the French beaches where they died. Joe Inwood was there to see a unique project by artists from Yorkshire honouring the fallen. Beaches everywhere reminders of the 9,000 who died on D-Day. This weekend, their sacrifice was remembered by hundreds of volunteers, led by two artists from Bradford. All around us there are relics of um, the Second World War, but the one thing that is missing is the people that actually died. This is the sacrifice and, and the loss that you have when we have these conflicts. To represent those sacrifices, 9,000 silhouettes, each one raked by volunteers, including Monica Kershaw from Bradford. She's experienced the cost of war firsthand when her son Christopher was killed in Afghanistan. It's been very emotional, really emotional day, just watching everybody take part in it and took the part in myself and it just really hit home. Also on the beach this weekend, two men who experienced D-Day itself. Very nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. George Batts was a British serviceman who helped take the beaches as Roger LeBlanc watched from the town. You know, you can talk about 100 dead, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 50,000. And what does it mean? Nothing. Because you can't visualise it. C'est une bonne chose d'avoir fait ça parce que c'est là qu'on se rend compte maintenant avec le recul le nombre de morts que ça a occasionné. I don't think anybody who sees it will be under any illusion of what happened on that day. So people came not just from France and Britain, but all across Europe, right around the world, to take part in something global, something representing peace, and to create something spectacular. very quietly made a very big statement um, and it's there right before you because that's that's about 9,000 people um, and I was kind of holding it together and then a plane flew past and did a little flyby which we not we didn't know about and, uh, and that kind of just broke me. Emotional because I've done my six um, soldiers from the Warriors Six on the beach down there and I've named them all and I'm just waiting for the water to come and wash them away. And you don't think of their ages, under 22, 23. They had no life. But let's hope to God it never happens again. It mustn't happen again. And that was the message of this work. 9,000 figures representing 9,000 lives. Fleeting, precious, and as quickly as they'd appeared, lost to the waves. Joe Inwood, BBC Look North, Aramanche. Well, we saw him briefly in that report. Let's talk to Andy Moss now, one of the sand artists behind that D-Day work. Getting something like that right is very difficult. How conscious were you that you had to do that? We obviously did a lot of preparation, but one thing we couldn't actually anticipate was how many people would turn up on the day. We took a coach full of 
people from Bradford, 30, and then probably another, we could rely on another 10, 20 people to turn up. But look how many did. Yeah, well, this, <laughs> this is what was so moving about the, the, the experience we had there, because people came from all over the world who worked with people from Germany, America, Australia, people from Israel, and for everyone to work together on a piece that looks like it's about a tribute about people that died in war. Mm. But the great thing about this piece that we produce, we think, is that it's about peace. And it says mm. it's a very strong statement about peace because it shows what happens in the absence of peace. And that's why we did it on World Peace Day, the 21st of September, instead of the 6th of June. So that's very important for us. It's an amazing achievement to pull it off, Andy, and I imagine that the timing must have been crucial to get 9,000 stencils down on the sand before the tide came in. How difficult was that? The, the irony is it's one of the easiest jobs in, <laughs> practically speaking, I've worked on because the people came because they showed interest in what we were doing, and that was... because. Uh, the film's great, but it really doesn't speak enough about the emotion of the day for those who were there. And unless you were there, it's, it's hard to explain how special it was for people. And the idea of a group of people who specifically wanted to say something about peace and produce a strong message coming together and achieving that, it's, it's incredible. Briefly, anything else in the pipeline for you? Well, we've, we've drawn attention to the 21st of September as... World Peace Day, obviously it's been going I think, since 1999, so next year I do think we want to do something else. Andy, lovely to talk to you, well done, well done as well. Thank you.